Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Janine and I am a personal trainer and nutrition coach. And in today's video, I am going to give you my tips and tricks on how to use a food scale. If you are someone who is looking to lose weight or attempting to track macros, the most important thing is that you are actually tracking the right nutrition values and you do that by using a food scale. A lot of people who think they're tracking macros are doing a lot of guessing or even using measuring cups and measuring spoons and even those aren't very accurate. So I'm gonna show you my tips and tricks on how you can easily use a food scale. It doesn't take any extra time at all. You just kind of get used to it and it's gonna help you make sure your calculations are so much more accurate. Before we get started, if you are not already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified. Now let's go ahead and get into it. So this is the scale that I am using. Honestly, you guys, they all function in the same way. The only thing I would say about this scale that I like is that it's large. So you want it large enough to where you can put a plate on top of it. Um, and then it's gonna weigh everything in the plate accurately. That's the only thing I don't like about the super small scales, but I will link a few different scales down below, but they're very fairly inexpensive. You can get them on Amazon. And like I said, they all kind of function in the same way. The most important thing that you, your scale needs to have is different units of measurement. So like ounces, fluid ounces, grams, milliliters, and then also a tear button. But like I said, they pretty much all are gonna have those features. So let's go ahead and get into it. There is a couple of different methods that I like to use. The most important thing is that whenever you are weighing something out that is calorie dense, we're talking like your proteins, nut butters, nuts, and things like that, you really need to use a scale so that they are, um, you know, you're, you're calculating everything accurately. When you are weighing or measuring out something that has a label, let the label be your guide in terms of how you want to weigh it out. Whenever possible, if you're given grams, go with grams because that tends to be easier. So for example, on this nut butter right here, it gives me a tablespoon measurement and in grams. Tablespoons are very inaccurate way to measure because you can have a rounded tablespoon, an underfilled one. So always go with grams if you're given the gram. So something like nut butter, which is one of the biggest culprits that people overserve themselves. Um, what I like to do is I place the entire jar right onto the scale and you, so take the lid off whole jar on the scale. Once it's on the scale with the lid off, you're going to hit the unit button on your scale and you're going to toggle over until it says grams. And then you are going to hit the tear button. The tear button is going to take the measurement on the scale down to zero. So it's looking as if there's nothing on the scale basically. So if I wanted to give myself one serving of nut butter, which is 32 grams, I would then grab any kind of spoon. Obviously, it does not need to be a measuring spoon, anything at all. And you're going to take out your serving. And you basically will just keep taking it out until the scale says negative 32. Then you know that what you have in your spoon or what you have taken out of the container is exactly 32 grams. So that's the best method when it comes to nut butter. So you can use that method for anything like, especially like something like yogurt, you would just place the yogurt onto the scale, take the lid off, hit tear, and then take out however many grams is your serving. So in this circumstance, 170 grams is one serving of yogurt and that's 90 calories. Now you know you are without a doubt having 170 grams versus if you were to put three use a three quarter cup measuring cup and then putting this into that measuring cup, chances are it's gonna be overfilled or end up weighing more than 
170 grams. So that is my favorite method for things like that. Now, let me show you what I like to do when I'm dealing with multiple ingredients. So let's say you were making a salad or like, you know, a taco bowl or something like that. So for this circumstance, if I each, between each ingredient that I enter, I would hit tear. So let's say for this particular bowl, let's say I was gonna add rice. Maybe I'm making like a taco bowl. And so I would start with rice and I wanna add 75 grams of rice. I would put in the rice, the cooked rice until it was 75 grams. And then once I have the rice in, I hit tear. And now let's say I would like to add in three ounces of chicken and I'm gonna put it in by ounces. So then I would toggle, I would press the unit button, go over to ounces, hit tear, and then add in however many ounces of chicken. Now let's say I wanted to add some dressing to this bowl and the dressing, which it usually is when it is a liquid, say the dressing is in mLs and it's 30 mLs, I would just press the unit button until I got to the mL unit, hit tear, and then I would add in, in this case, it's 32 mLs into it until it says 32, and then there's another serving of that, and so on and so forth. So say now I wanted to add 30 grams of shredded cheese, I would toggle the unit button over to grams, hit tear, and I would add in my shredded cheese until it says 30. So now I've got a perfectly portioned out bowl and it's not taking any additional time. It's just that I'm building that bowl right on top of a scale. So now I know that those portions are all exactly accurate. So that is it for today's little scale tutorial. If you are somebody who is trying to track macros, you're trying to lose weight, I highly recommend that you invest in a food scale. It's a much more accurate way to really track the amount of calories that you are consuming. Some of the most common mistakes come, they happen in the kitchen with estimating, with guessing. It just doesn't quite work. And if you are someone who's trying to lose weight and you don't know what your macros should be, I am a macro coach and I do macro assessments. I will link that down below in the description if you want my help to know how many calories, how much protein, etc., that you should be eating for your goals. I would be happy to help you out. Thank you so much for joining me on today's video. Comment below if this was helpful or if you have any other questions or any other you know things that you want clarification on because I could happily do another video for you guys. Thank you so much and we'll see you on the next one.